Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at lecture 2.4, Memory Model and Locality, and we're going to be focusing on tiled parallel algorithms. The objective of this lecture is to help you to understand the motivation and key ideas for tiled parallel algorithms. And we're going to first go over how the memory bandwidth can limit the parallel kernel performance, and then we will begin to introduce the, um, how we can uh, design tiled algorithms with barrier synchronization. Here's a quick review of the basic matrix multiplication kernel. And we, here we have the uh, block and thread index to data mapping. We have a test of valid range. And then we have a for loop that um, uh, for each thread to access one of the rows of uh, A and one of the columns of B. And then uh, we accumulate the dot uh, product result. And eventually, we'll write into the C element. If we summarize a, uh, the access pattern of that kernel, um, this is um, how we can uh, look at accesses. Thread 1, thread 2 are, uh, let's say, in both are in the, uh, in the same uh, thread block. And um, for access, uh, if, if, if they both access the same row of A, uh, thread 1 will be uh, doing all these accesses as shown by the arrows that go from these memory locations into thread 1. And thread 2 will also be accessing global memory and uh, accessing those locations, as was shown with arrows going from those locations into thread 2. So we have a lot of these redundant memory accesses uh, from the same memory location into thread 1 and thread 2. If we look at the performance or execution speed of uh, the, that kernel on the Fermi GPU, um, we can do a very simple back of the envelope calculation to estimate the kind of performance we can achieve with that simple matrix multiplication code. And um, uh, if we look at that for loop, we have two memory accesses, one to a A element, one to a B element. And then once we access those two elements, we're going to be doing a multiplication and addition. So we, we're accessing two memory operands and do two floating point operations. And this means that uh, if the, the operand values are four bytes each, then in order to, to, to do every floating point operation, we will need to have four bytes of uh, data from the global memory. And if we want to do, be able to do one floating point operation per second or one flop, then we will need to access four bytes of data from the global memory per second. If we look at the peak performance of the Fermi GPU, the Fermi GPU is capable of executing 1,000 gigaflops or 1 teraflops of floating point operations. And this means that we can do 1,000 giga floating point operations per second. And if we go back to the, uh, the, this analysis, this means that we will need to be able to access four times 1,000 gigabytes of data from the global memory per second. And so this uh, gives us 4,000 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth requirement. In reality, the hardware can support up to 150 gigabytes per second in this processor this particular processor. So if we calculate the amount of a floating point execution that can be supported by the 150 gigabytes per second, we can just divide it by four, and we see that it's 37.5 gigaflops. And this back of the envelope calculation tells us that that simple uh, kernel will not be able to execute more than 37.5 uh, gigaflops in the uh, on this particular hardware. And when we go and run that uh, uh, kernel on the hardware, we, we actually can measure the performance, and we will see that it's right around two, uh, 25 gigaflops. And obviously, um, you know, the 37.5 is the upper limit. So we're actually pretty close to the upper limit. We're getting about 25 gigaflops on a real execution. 
So as we can see, 25 gigaflops is uh, extremely small. Um, it's 2.5 percent of the the peak, the uh, the capability that the hardware has, or what we call the key, uh, peak performance. Building a piece of hardware and only able to achieve 2.5 of its uh, percent of its capability is very much a waste. So we really need to figure out how to drastically cut down the memory accesses in order to get close to 1,000 gigaflops um, for the hardware. So this is the, um, you know, the, a quick review of the access uh, pattern. So uh, we have global memory, and you know, each thread is accessing global memory, and uh, these threads are accessing uh, the same uh, global memory locations, perhaps at different times. So this is, you know, the, there are all these redundant accesses that are congesting the, uh, the memory um, the system. So the basic idea of using shear memory um, in a tiled or blocked uh, algorithm, and from now on we're going to uh, use tiled algorithm, is that we actually try to uh, load each memory location only once into the uh, on-chip memory. And th in this case, it's the shear memory. So um, uh, remember that we had eight of these locations um, you know, that uh, can be uh, uh, ac well, uh, actually more than eight locations that can be accessed by thread one and thread two. So uh, we, assuming that we have, in this small example, four shear memory locations, then we can actually uh, load the first four locations into the shared memory. And then we have both thread one and thread two do their computation based on those four operands in a what we call the first phase of the execution. So we see that we show that uh, these locations now feed into thread one and thread two with their arrows. So now we see that the arrows that are coming back from the global memory have been reduced. And all these uh, errors that used to uh, be coming back from uh, coming from the global memory are now coming from the on-chip memory. So we're redirecting a lot of the accesses into the on-chip memory. We therefore we can reduce the pressure or the number of accesses that we actually have to use in the global memory. And this is done by dividing the global memory contents into these tiles, and the tiles will have to match the size of the shared memory, and then we make sure that we focus the computation of all the, th all the th in threads involved in a thread block on this small number, one or small number of these tiles in each phase of its execution. And this is how we cut down the memory accesses to the global memory. Now, when we finish the first tile, we will have the threads to, uh, to load the second uh, tile into the on-chip memory. And then we can use, uh, have all the threads to consume their operands from the uh, on-chip memory again. So this, is, this shows us that how we go from one tile to the next tile to the next tile, and so on. As it turns out, the, uh, the concept of uh, tiling and blocking is not unique in computer science or computer engineering. In, a, um, in fact, uh, in many uh, uh, domains, we, we can see congested traffic, um, you know, in, uh, in, in, uh, that manifests itself in different contexts. Uh, context. So, for example, uh, in a traffic system, uh, we can have a very congested traffic system near major cities. And um, we, uh, in, we need to have a significant reduction of vehicles in order to alleviate the congestion. So that's why in all these major cities, at traffic, uh, major traffic, uh, busy traffic hours, there is oftentimes a policy of carpooling. And so essentially what the, uh, what the idea of carpooling is, is that you, if we can have, we, we have the same number of people who need to go to work or go shopping and so on. If we can somehow encourage multiple people to, uh, to ride in one car, then we can uh, drastically reduce the number of cars that need to be on the road. So uh, we still need to move all these people around. But if we can have these people to fit into, the, uh, uh, multiple people to fit into one car, then we achieve our goal of reducing the number of cars that need to go through the system. 
the congestion is really because of the number of cars. So if we can reduce the number of cars, but still move the same number of people through the system, then we, reduce, we, we can uh, alleviate the congestion. So tiling is actually um, a concept that has a direct correspondence with carpooling. In this case, the um, number of operands, the operands that the arithmetic units need to use are uh, directly corresponding to the uh, drivers. So in the traffic system, we need to move people around. In a computer system, we need to move the operands around. That's why these uh, thread operands correspond to the drivers. And the second uh, people, and the second correspondence is that the memory access requests into the uh, global memory correspond to the cars. Because uh, you know, in, in the traffic system, the cars need to move through the, tra the, the roadways. And uh, in the computer system, the memory accesses need to move in and out of the memory system. So um, what we are really ha uh, having here is that we're trying to have all the operands to carpool and utilize the same memory request and so that the, you can, we can move the value into the shared memory and then all the arithmetic units uh, will access their operands from the shared memory and essentially they write in the same car. Carpools have problems or challenges and we will see that the, uh, a tiled algorithm will have exactly the same kind of challenges. In the case of carpools, some of the carpool arrangement could be uh, easier than others. For example, um, if you have a situation where one of your coworkers live very close to your house, then it becomes a lot easier to manage carpool. Whereas if all your coworkers uh, uh, live very far away from you, you may not be able to easily find someone to carpool with. So in this case, we have a, a gentleman here who, you know, who desperately needs to have someone to carpool so that he can go through the carpool lane. So he, you know, stop at the gas, gas station near the freeway and say, hey, I need, uh, I need uh, people to ride with me. So um, if we're not careful, we could get into the situation where not enough threats can share their, uh, uh, share their operands in the shared the share memory. And the second one is some of the vehicles may be too small for carpools. For example, in this particular picture, we have a lot of people riding on a very, very small vehicle. So this corresponds to the situation where we may not have enough shared memory to be able to hold the tiles. And that would uh, actually make the tiling algorithm also very difficult. So we're going to uh, see the, um, both types of challenges in the next few uh, lectures. So let's first go into the, the, uh, the first challenge. You know, um, how do we make sure that we can find uh, a lot of threads to, sh to share their operands in the shared memory? So uh, let's go back into the carpool arrangement a little bit for the, uh, to establish the intuition. So whenever we need to have two coworkers to carpool with each other, the, their work, sleep, and eating schedule matters. So here we show a good case where uh, worker A and worker B have very similar schedule over time. The uh, blue arrow shows the time uh, that goes from left to right. So um, e each night, the, uh, both workers Go to, uh, go to sleep roughly at the same time, and they want to go to work roughly at the same time, and they want to go home for dinner roughly at the same time. So in this case, it's actually very easy to be able to just negotiate a little bit and say, okay, uh, you want to go home at uh, you know, the 5.30, I want to go home at 6.30, maybe we'll compromise a little bit and we go home at six o'clock. So when the schedule is close enough, you can negotiate and then uh, you know, uh, make sure that um, you have a commonly agreeable uh, time to, uh, to go from one place to another place. So this is a good case. On the other hand, we could have a bad case where worker A and worker B try to arrange for a carpool, but worker A has a very different schedule than worker B. When worker B goes to the sleep at night, worker A decided to go out and party all night. 
And then when worker B uh, needs to go to work in the morning, worker A wants to go to sleep. And finally, when worker B wants to have di- go home for, to have dinner, worker A said, oh, uh, now I, I'm ready to go to work. So if you have a drastically different schedule, then it's very hard to for worker A and worker B to be able to agree on some common time to be able to leave for work and uh, leave for, uh, and, and uh, go home from work. So that's why carpools need synchronization. There needs to be some kind of negotiation so that um, all the uh, uh, carpool uh, co-workers can agree on some common time to leave. And in par- parallel programming, we have exactly the same kind of situation. So when we want to be able to uh, to have multiple threads to share their input operands in a shared memory with a tile algorithm. We have good and bad uh, timing situation. So uh, on top, we have a good timing situation where all the threads have very similar access timing. So I'm showing that um, uh, in the middle, have, I'm showing the global memory locations, and then uh, on, we we show the timeline for thread one and thread two to access these memory locations. In the top one, we see that thread one and thread two access the, their, uh, the, uh, each memory location in times that are very close to each other. So even though there may be a little bit of variation for using this memory location, but they're close to each other. So this is the situation where we can have a, you know, uh, easily achieve some kind of commonly agreeable time for thread one and thread two to be able to, uh, to both execute out of the shared memory for a common set of operands. And here we show a bad timing where thread one and thread two will access the same memory location at very different times. We show that uh, for, um, you know, for the first memory location, thread one will access that location at very early time, whereas thread two wants to access that same location at a very late time. In this case, it becomes extremely difficult for us to be able to have thread one and thread two to access uh, the data in the shared memory. And um, uh, it would, uh, it, 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 there would be not a good way to compromise for a common execution timing. So this brings us to the outline of a, uh, a tile, uh, tiling of a technique. We need to identify a tile of global memory content that are uh, uh, assembled by multiple threads. So uh, we say here, uh, we can see how the, uh, the, the access to our input data structure can be divided into tiles. And then um, each tile can actually be you know, a fetch uh, in, uh, in a collaborative manner by multiple threads in a thread block into the shared memory. And then, um, so th- once the data is loaded into the shared memory, we can have multiple threads that need that data to all consume the contents from the shared memory rather than going to the global memory. And once everyone completes their consumption of the data from the shared memory, then we can move on to the next tile. We can iterate this process until we finish processing the entire data structure. And we're going to see um, a a more practical um, uh, uh, steps and how we can implement each of these steps uh, in the next uh, lecture. So, if you like to learn more about the ideas and the uh, uh, motivation for tiled algorithms, I'd like to encourage you to read section 5.3 of the textbook. Thank you.